Hey guys, it's Greg with Apple Explained, and today we're going to cover the history of Next, the computer company Steve Jobs founded after being forced out of Apple. This topic was the third place winner of last week's voting poll, and if you didn't get to vote, make sure you're subscribed. That way, the voting polls will show up right in your mobile activity feed, and you can let me know which video you'd like to see next. Now, if you watched my previous video on how Apple and Microsoft became rivals, you probably remember that Steve Jobs was fired by Apple's former CEO John Scully and board of directors in 1985. And that is where our story begins. Steve told the board he was going to start a new computer company consisting of himself and seven hand-picked employees from Supermicro, the division Steve led inside Apple responsible for the Macintosh and Lisa systems. While still leading Supermicro, Steve received a pitch from Paul Berg, a biochemistry professor at Stanford University. Berg wanted a 3M workstation for higher education use with a megabyte of RAM, a mega flop of performance, and a display with a resolution of 1200 by 900 or 1 megapixel. 1 megabyte of RAM, a mega flop chip, and a megapixel display, hence the name 3M. But due to internal turmoil between Steve and the board, he felt it wasn't smart to ask for tons of money in R&D and marketing to develop this machine. However, when you have your own company, you don't need approval from anyone to develop a product. So Jobs decided that the 3M computer was going to be Next's first product. Now before we get into the computer itself, let's talk a little bit about Next as a company, because it operated in a pretty unconventional way at the time. Steve built a corporate culture totally unlike the one he built at Apple. Instead of hiring employees to work at a company, he invited members to join his community. Every member had one of two comfortable salary options offered by the company, and the salary you received depended on when you started working for jobs. If you worked for Steve before 1986, you were paid $75,000 a year, but if you began working for him after 1986, you were paid $50,000 a year. Now this roughly converts to $150,000 and $100,000 today. And I should also mention that checks were sent out to team members one month in advance, which was definitely not standard business practice. So not only did Next members receive a comfortable salary, but they also enjoyed a pretty generous benefits package. Because in addition to married couples, healthcare coverage was also offered to unmarried couples and same-sex couples. But unfortunately, the latter option was ultimately removed due to limitations from the healthcare provider. So it's clear that Jobs took care of his team members, but in return, he needed them to put their best work into the products they were creating. And the 3M machine, officially named the Next Computer, was their first product. The release date was delayed several months past the initial estimate, and when it was ready to ship, it was only distributed in limited quantities to the higher education market. It ran a beta version of Next Step 1.0 as its operating system and featured 8 megabytes of RAM, which could be expanded up to 64 megabytes, 16 times more than what the Macintosh SE of the time could support. And reception to the Next computer was favorable, with Byte magazine saying it was worth every penny of its $6,500 market price. Now, later in 1989, Next accepted two business deals that would really help them out financially. The first deal they struck was with Canon, the camera company. Canon invested a whopping $100 million in Next, which gave them a 16% stake in the company. And you might be wondering why a camera company would invest so heavily in a computer company, but back in the 90s, Canon was actually gearing up to launch their own line of workstations called Object Station, and Canon wanted Next to provide the operating system for it, which cemented Next's focus on software. The second deal was with Businessland, a popular computer reseller. Businessland had been sustaining itself off selling compact computers, which was actually the third most popular computer brand in the US back in the 90s, and Businessland turned a huge profit from this business model, because in 1989 alone, they sold almost $1.2 billion worth of product. But Compaq and Businessland had a dispute over sales strategies that led to Compaq ending its six-year relationship with the reseller, costing Businessland nearly $22 million in lost revenue the following year. So the company began searching for other computer brands to partner with, which led them straight to Next, although they would have been better off reselling Apple computers. 
So Business Land ended up becoming a distributor for the Next computer, even though it contradicted Next's business plan to sell exclusively to the education market. And the reason for this was likely to try and surpass major PC manufacturers in sales by the end of 1990. But at the price point of $9,999, or about $20,000 today, the next computer was simply too expensive to achieve big sales numbers from average consumers. Now not long after the next computer hit the retail market, it was actually discontinued to prevent it from competing against two new workstations Next was bringing to market, and those two machines were the Next Cube and the Next Station. Both of them were more powerful than the previous Next computer, and the Next Station was half the cost, with the least expensive model priced at $4,995, and the most expensive model coming in at $7,995. It ran at 25 megahertz thanks to the Motorola 68040 processor, absolutely smoking the Macintosh classic of the early 90s. And over the following three years, Next would continue to sell different models of the Next Station, each model learning from and improving upon its predecessor. In 1992, Next had sold $140 million worth of product, which seems like a really big number. But when you look at the sales by number of units, they had only sold 20,000 units, and that number was dwarfed by mega manufacturers like Compact and Packard Bell. By the time the next station was discontinued in 1993, the latest model was sporting a 33 MHz CPU and 12-bit color support. Around this time, Next began offering color printers, and the standardization of CD-ROM drives were introduced as floppies were being phased out across the industry. The company would continue to offer motherboards and computer enclosures for a couple years after, but their low hardware sales forced Next to rethink their position in the tech industry, and they eventually realized their software and operating system assets were much more profitable than their hardware. So they pivoted to being a full-blown software company, with their main product being the Next Step operating system. Due to this shift, Next Computers was renamed to Next Software, and about three-fifths of the company was laid off. This move turned out to be incredibly advantageous to the company. Now around this time, many companies began providing their employees with computer workstations, but every company wanted their own customized software to better fit their needs. Next responded by releasing the OpenStep Enterprise API and the WebObjects web app platform, each one addressing different needs. For financial companies, OpenStep was fantastic because it ran on Windows systems, and WebObjects was popular after Apple acquired Next and dramatically lowered the $50,000 price tag. Companies loved the platform because it was a web-based product, which meant you could have the same experience on a high-end machine as on a low-end one. Companies like Dell, Disney, MCI, and the BBC all used web objects at some point in time, and you might even interact with a web objects app on a daily basis, since both Apple.com and the iTunes Music Store continue to run on the platform today. Now, I mentioned Next being acquired by Apple, and I want to talk about that in more detail since this acquisition was a defining moment in not only the history of Next, but the career of Steve Jobs. So in 1996, Apple had released several updates to the classic Mac operating system, which was quickly aging due to the OS's dated roots. Apple had tried to remedy this with a concept operating system codenamed Copeland, or by licensing BOS, a sketchy Mac OS knockoff developed by now defunct B Inc, but neither of these options turned out to be viable for Apple, so they were left with one option, acquiring Next and using their Next Step operating system as the foundation for the next version of Mac OS. When the deal was finalized in early 1997, Steve Jobs was brought back to Apple, the company he was fired from about 10 years earlier. He initially served as a consultant and made dramatic changes, executing one of the greatest company turnarounds in history. This unbelievable achievement earned him the position of interim CEO until 2000 when he announced that he would serve as Apple's CEO once again. The same year, Steve announced the public beta of Mac OS X, which was the result of the next acquisition. It was built on the Darwin core with graphic and media rendering engines, and finished off with a shiny Aqua user interface. All of these features were based on the Next Step operating system, and there's actually a lot of similarities between the two. 
For example, the dock was featured in Next Step back in the early 90s, as well as the ability to move around a window with its contents following along in real time. Even the file viewer and browser in Next Step is like a flattened, desaturated version of the Finder that shipped in early versions of Mac OS X. So Next may have been a short-lived company, but had Jobs not founded it, we probably wouldn't have Apple today, which means we wouldn't have the iPhone, iPad, or any of the products Jobs pioneered that saved Apple from bankruptcy. So although most people will never know what Next was, its brief existence altered the future of technology for the better. So that is the history of Next, and if you want to vote for the next video topic, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.